Labrador, wild, majestic, supernatural, possessing literally thousands of miles of free-running rivers. It's the ideal destination for fly fishers. This summer, I'm fortunate to return to a river and a lodge where I've had many fond memories. That place? Big River. Big River is where I took my daughter in 2018 to experience her first Atlantic salmon fishing in Labrador. Today, she still speaks of that trip with awe and wonder. So you can imagine how excited I am to return to this magical place. Come join me on my adventure to the big land. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orbis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited. WeatherTech Canada. Whenever I speak to anglers at fly fishing clubs or at trade shows, I'm always asked about Labrador, which of course leads to a discussion. What is so intriguing about this place for fly fishers? Could it be the raw, natural beauty of the landscape? the true remoteness of this land? Or perhaps the fact it is one of the last frontiers in the world that is virtually untouched by humanity. This is all certainly true and part of the magic formula that is unique to this destination. But then there is of course the fishing. Wild brook trout that reach epic proportions sea-run Atlantic salmon that come up the rivers in the thousands. So many wonders for any angler to behold. Which is why I asked Judy Normar, manager of Big River Lodge, to tell me more about what brings anglers to this very special place. Well, you'll find that uh, Big River is so remote. We're 120 miles northeast of Goose Bay, which um, actually puts it in a very uh, truly wilderness area of Labrador. Uh, the fishing here is fantastic, easy wading. Uh, the river has lots of pools directly out in front of the lodge, which most of our clients really like. Others like the adventure of traveling up the river to, uh, to another falls further up uh, river, as well as at the mouth of the river. So there's a great opportunity for anglers the novice angler, anglers who, uh, the experienced anglers, I guess, uh, also love Big River. We're the only lodge here, and uh, it's truly uh, a pristine area of Labrador. The travel alone into Big River is uh, quite unique. The landscape, of course, coming flying into uh, the lodge. Then you're overlooking the river. Um, there's very few people, so you have, um, you know, there's very low pressure on the river for fishing, which uh, most everybody would appreciate. It's just a truly, a truly uh, wilderness experience, overall experience to fish here at Big River. After all the challenges we've all faced, um, 
I think you deserve now to plan your next adventure to Big River Camps, uh, where you can fish directly in front of the lodge, avail of the great accommodations and the food here at the lodge, the great camaraderie, and uh, just have that getaway that everybody needs after these, uh, these uh, past few months. In 2018, I visited Big River with my daughter, Jenna, to fish for Atlantic salmon. Jenna had fished for salmon in Newfoundland before, but never in Labrador. That week lives on in our memories because it was so very special for both of us. Getting some good action here. Okay, this way? This morning. I didn't see a jump either. I didn't see that on one. That take, one. No. Oh, there's, there's a bunch of fish moving in there now, I bet. I've seen another one porpoise. Okay. I'll go grab my net. Okay. Ooh. Come over this way a little bit. This yep, way? you're doing okay. a fine job. When he runs, just let him go. Okay. Don't try to stop him. Okay. They can really beat your knuckles up. Yeah. As well, I'm sure you've already found yeah. out. <laughs> Keep a steady tension on them. Okay. Not too much. So he starts to tire a bit, and then we're going to try to get him in, right? Yes. When you get him close and we're ready to get him in it, try to get his head into the water. Okay. Then you'll be able to pretty much steer him, right? Yep. You get him in closer now and uh, you get his head up close to the okay. water, you give him a pull, you should be able to. There you go. Oh. And sort of get him up like that again. Okay, you like this. Oh, there you go, there you go, there you go. Beautiful. Whew. Nice. That <laughs> awesome. was awesome. Thank you so Good much. Good job bringing him to the net. Oh, so nice thank job. you so much. Oh, you're welcome. I'm going to just grab you. Let's again. go get another one. Yeah, Thanks. I'll help you. Okay. Sadly on this trip, Jenna could not join me as she was busy completing her master's degree in education. So I was on my own for this adventure, but not quite alone. I was fortunate to be joined by a number of guests who were as excited as I am to get out on the water. Today was beautiful and enjoyable even though we did not have success with the salmon. But that's the reality of fishing, no matter where you go. With all this fresh air, I don't mind saying, we were all a little tired. That is the beauty of having the lodge so close to the runs. It took us no time to get back. A great meal, some fishing stories, an adult beverage, then afterwards, off to bed.
One of the reasons Big River Lodge is so special is the variety of fishing available. This morning, we decided to head down river by jet boat to an area where the river and the sea meet. There are some small streams that run out into tidal waters. This area is known for holding lots of active sea run brook trout. Just as I remembered, the topwater action for these brook trout was absolutely epic. Despite the fact our main goal was to catch some wild brook trout, fishing is always full of surprises. Like hooking into a gorgeous salmon. This was an epic fight, as I was only fishing with a six weight rod and four X tippet geared for brook trout. we decided to change locations and head back to the main river in search of more fresh salmon. We'll take a few steps down. Okay. One, two here. Two will be all right, yeah. We can... And then you just lengthen the leader? We're lengthening your cast each time? Yeah. Just like you're doing sure 45 cover. degrees. Okay. And it'll come right on around. But the key is what we're trying to do is systematically cover this whole... Yes, cover as much water as, as possible. And my cover understanding... This, there's a hole going right on down. Okay. And my understanding is that like the salmon won't necessarily move that far. I've got to put it in their window. Yeah, right in their face pretty yeah. much. They're not chasing. And then what we're looking for, and I see you following my fly, you're looking to see a rise or a flash or something that tells you that I've moved a fish, right? Yes. You know, one of the great things about Big River and why I like coming here 
is it has a lot of runs and pools. Great places where you can have lots of water with fish and you don't have to share it. A lot of lodges you go to, they don't have a lot of water or they have two, three, four pools, maybe half dozen. Here, they have a lot. And it goes all the way from in front of the lodge up the river. You know, one of the things I really like about this type of Atlantic salmon fishing, it's not complicated. I mean, the setup is so simple. I'm using a seven weight to a nine weight rod with a floating line. And for a leader, most of them are eight to 10 feet and they're not tapered. In fact, you don't want tapered and you certainly do not want a knotted one that's built. What you want is just a straight piece of mono. I'm using eight pound test, stiff, cast this fly very easily and out into the current. But the big thing is you don't want the knots because in this fast water, it actually causes resistance and will pull your fly down when you're trying to riffle it across the top. Or if you're throwing out a bomber, it causes other grief. They have found that just a straight piece of mono is all you need in an eight to 10 foot length. I love Atlantic salmon flies because they're so beautiful and they're so varied. Here at Big River, most of the time, you're gonna need two varieties. One is gonna be a bomber or bug if the conditions are right for top water, and the other one is a wet fly. The wet flies they use here are generally small. They're gonna be sizes in eight to 10, sometimes even 12 if it's later in the season and the water gets low. Salmon, like all migratory fish coming up rivers, will choose the easiest routes and holding water to minimize their use of energy. Seams, which are the transition between fast and slow water, are the natural highways the salmon will use for the journey upriver. You can see the seam where the foam lines are, but I've also indicated these by red markers. The red lines clearly show where the fish will potentially be and why anglers need to swing their flies through these areas. The riffling hitch is a popular way of getting a wet fly to ride in the surface film, much like a topwater fly as you swing it through the current. Usually the flies are small, sizes 8 to 12, and having them wake across a riffle drives the salmon absolutely crazy and they will aggressively strike. Here is how to tie the riffling hitch on a wet fly. So Mitch, back on the river, we're in a great run here. And you know, I've salmon fished a bit, but a lot about salmon fishing, obviously like all fishing is presentation. And there's, you know, the basic rule I got taught, 45 degrees to 30 degrees or 30 to 45, but that really depends upon the water speed. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yes, Colin, that's uh, right. If you've got a really fast current, generally you'll upstream end a little bit, just mm -hmm. slow the fly down. But if you've got a slow current, sometimes that angle will turn into a 90 even, on a slow current. All the way to 90, right, to get the speed the going. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes you even have to do a downstream end. If it's really slow, like the end of a run sometimes, you got to downstream end a little bit, just speed it up. You don't want that fly ripping the line too fast, so a steady speed. Or too slow, or too slow. sinks below the surface. Yeah. So you want it going across, and then the other thing that I got taught, um, and I, I heard you reinforce it the other day, is that you know when you're going across and you've got the water that looks promising, that sometimes the best thing is kind of extend your arm out a bit and hold that fly as long as possible, doing this little dance out there on the surface. Especially in faster water like this. Yeah. Yes. So it's kind of like a bomber, uh, if I'm on slack water or even dry fly fishing for a trout, where you're trying to get the longest drift possible without drag, right? Only here we want the drag, but we want to keep it in the kill zone or, or where the fish are likely to be, right? And not want it going too fast or too slow. Yeah, another great thing about Big River, it's uh, family orientated. Uh, you know, we've got father, son is coming to Big River. Then we have father, son, grandsons coming. Um, also, grandmothers and 
her son and then the grandson. Um, a lot of, I guess, um, outfitters or, or lodges, it tends to be uh, males only, I guess, and, and groups of males. So we, we have that as well, of course, and we truly appreciate uh, all those groups. But we also uh, try and focus on family, uh, family events that they can come and get get some of the youth involved in the salmon fishery and uh, you know what it takes to be be a, an Atlantic salmon fly fisherman and of course the food food is always something that uh, guests enjoy throughout the day and at the end of the day to sit down and enjoy the camaraderie at the dinner table so our chef uh, prepares fabulous meals and uh, along with our housekeeper who keeps everything running smoothly for, for our clients as well. So, um, yeah, everybody should have the opportunity to experience something like this. And, um, you know, the river, the lodge, the accommodations, the food, it's a total package. Yeah, we've all experienced, um, I guess, some very challenging months uh, since March due to the COVID-19 pandemic and I um, think it's a great time now for people to uh, get together and plan their next vacation and get away. We've been all cooped up for some time and I'm sure everybody's looking to, uh, to have that little getaway from, uh, from all the challenges we've all experienced these past few months. It's another beautiful day in Labrador. Slightly overcast, which is perfect for salmon migrating upriver. Today we decided to try the runs just in front of the lodge, which are easy to access and also wade. We cast for several minutes without success. Then suddenly a fresh run of salmon arrived and then it got really exciting for all of us. so many fish in this run today. It's so much fun. We're literally making three or four casts and having a fish take a swing at our flies. Most anglers see a boulder or a set of rocks in a river and assume that the trout or salmon are lying behind the structure out of the current. What many do not realize is that often fish will hold in front of a boulder in a zone referred to as the hydro cushion or pillow. The current will frequently create a small area where fish can easily hold and continue to hunt for food. Wise anglers understand this and will always swing a fly either on top or below the surface in front of this type of structure. There's a take. Oh, nice. I think that was, I think it's trout. Yeah. Awesome.
some very big fish will take advantage of the hydro cushion to easily hold in fast current. Why do anglers love Atlantic salmon so much? It has much to do with how they fight. They jump, pull line off your reel, and cartwheel through the air. Once an angler has hooked into one of these silver leapers, then they're usually addicted, like I am. After the morning fishing, we went back to the lodge for a hearty and delicious lunch. Then it was recommended we head up river to try some new waters for both brook trout and salmon. Conveniently, the lodge has trails that follow the river, which are ideal for side-by-sides. So we jumped into one, and after a fairly short run, we arrived at our first spot to fish. Joining me today to fish this run are Alan and Brad Ledgerwood from Prince Edward Island. Didn't take long for the action to happen, as during the night some fresh-run salmon had come upriver. Got him. There you go. I think I may be able to steer him here for you, if you want. Yeah. Nice boat trip. One of the best parts about having the river so accessible to the main lodge is that there's always the option to head back out on the water after dinner. The best way to end a day. While out on the water, I had a chance to chat with Eleanor Keeping, who is there with her son and grandson. She told me why she loves fly fishing so much. So I have really been fishing ever since I was six to eight years old. So. Uh, I got my children into fishing uh, when they were small because I used to look after them at a pond all the time and it was something I could do with the children for us to enjoy just being together and I could entertain them by myself. I do think it's important for kids to be interested in the outdoors 
both for enjoyment and for them to learn about the environment and how they can look after it. Well, this adventure is coming to a close. I had a wonderful visit to Big River here in Labrador. I sincerely hope everyone who is watching will get the opportunity to visit Labrador and this very special lodge sometime soon. Thanks for joining us and we hope to see you on the water in the near future. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association Orbis Fly Fishing Scientific Anglers Trout Unlimited WeatherTech Canada